the new kvk is here heroic anthem let's go ahead and let's check it in this video i'm gonna go through the shop because oh my god is there plenty of items that we will be able to acquire in heroic anthem and we're gonna check the rules as well because there's plenty of things that you want to know before you want to get into the new kvk Hello my friends and welcome back to another Rise of Kingdom video, my name is Legend Ronnie and today I'm gonna talk about the Heroic Anthem. In a couple of kingdoms, Heroic Anthem has become available, the new KVK type of event. We are noticing over here in this screen that there is a Trojan Horse, which apparently is coming soon. We already know about Light and Darkness, we have already played it. So the third KVK is here and we already know about the 4 KVK, that's very interesting news. Is that after the registration period, kingdoms cannot change their story, kingdoms in the same story will be matched up according to event regulations. Multiple camps will be placed in the same story, camps may be comprised of multiple kingdoms. Yeah, so I suppose that that's kinda random, <laughs> they just go by power, they just want exact number of power on an approximate number of power in each camp this is what i'm expecting so what you get is gonna get the kingdom who did not participate three times in a row be automatically registered to a random story during the next registration period but if i don't participate three times in a row that's nearly a, a year <laughs> kingdom can unite as one to choose their story once the king of a kingdom has chosen and registered all governors of that kingdom will be considered registered that makes sense i mean you can't just go solo that would have been crazy season of conquest heroic anthem two days and nine hours it means that you have three days to register it's already registered it says total kingdoms 10 season length 51 i'm expecting that that is supposed to be days if it's 51 days that's quite a lot light versus darkness is way shorter than 51 number of camps is four i'm gonna go through the rules first and after that we're gonna check the shop because is the shop really juicy and <laughs> very nice definitely it is but we need to know the rules before we check the shop the first thing that we want to note in the heroic anthem is going to be the fog after the season has started the map will be covered in fog governors must send scouts out to explore and clear the fog to truly understand the terrain now this is something very new in the lost kingdom one two and light versus darkness we did not have this the map was already discovered for us now in Heroic Anthem, there's a little bit of extra things to do and you have to explore the fog. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be an achievement or some rewards regarding that. Bastion, while clearing fog, scouts may come upon bastions. A commander and their troops are stationed at each garrison. This season, there are a total of 14 commanders waiting for governors to discover them. Now, in order to understand the bastions, you need to read the favor. Complete quests given by commanders to increase their favor along with crystal mine work speed we're gonna see that later on at high enough favored levels your troops can use one of the commander's abilities as a support skill now this is very interesting news and i'm expecting that these 14 commanders is going to be commanders that we have in the game or maybe there's gonna be some commanders with special skills like we have on, on ions ballads or special skills that you have on Lohar's Arms Training. We'll find that out more information when <laughs> we will be able to experience this. But this is very interesting that you will be able to get extra skills. Support skills. Each troops can use an additional two support skills. That is amazing and concerning. And <laughs> oh my god, I don't know if this is gonna be super good or if this is gonna be super bad. But two more skills that is a lot whose levels will be based on your corresponding commander if you do not yet have the commander you cannot use that skill now this is making connection with the bastion meaning that the 14 commanders are from our loot table of commanders so if you do not have those commanders in your loot table in your commander list and if you don't have their skills upgraded then you will not be able to benefit from that skills or as it says over here whose level will be based on your corresponding commander if you have it at one that means that you will only get as a level one skill 
Meaning that it's kind of cutting off about Ion's ballads and what I was saying about Lohar arms training. This is all related about in-game skills. It's really just a lot of presumptions that we are making right now. The best way we're going to see when the game comes out. Because having a Richard with, for example, another Richard to support skills with extra healing or extra increase enhancing healing. I don't know, this might just sound a little bit crazy. Active skills are active skills, passive skills are passive skills. Now the favor says as support skills. I don't think we have 14 support commanders in the game overall. Maybe I didn't count them, but who knows? That might just be the trick. Maybe it's just skills from support commanders. Or maybe it's just the tier 1 and some tier 2 commanders, aka all the Frederick, Julius Caesar, Mehmed, you guys know the tier 1 LC, the ones that you start with, Minamoto, and then you have the tier 2, which is Constantine, Alexander, Genghis Saladin, Edward and Tomiris. I suppose those are kind of 14 in total, so it might just be the tier 1 and tier 2 commanders and their skills, but that's going to be the question, is it going to be their passive skills or their active skills? Because, for example, if I can add on my Genghis an Edward skill, I mean, WTF to that. Genghis has 1,700 and you add another 2,500. It must be an order of things and must be balanced. I'm pretty sure they kind of test it. And that's what they are doing right now. That's why it's only available to a couple of kingdoms. It's kind of a test. So let's see how crazy this is going to get. Special content. This is where they mention about the crystal. After the season has begun, governors can build a new structure in their city crystal mine. We can work in the crystal mine to get crystal working. Mines cost food, wood, stone, and gold. Now I'm going to stop you right there. We already need a lot of food, wood, stone, and gold to heal our troops. Now we have to spend resources on this mine. And since this is going to be a rare resource only available in Heroic Anthem, I'm pretty sure everyone is going to focus on it as much as possible to try to get as many crystals as possible. Not sure I'm super hyped about this. Spending food, wood, stone, and gold... We will see how expensive it's going to be when it is released. Upgrading the crystal mine will increase the maximum amount of work which can be ordered. At the same time, completing quests given by commanders will increase the work speed. That is again super amazing, meaning that in Heroic Anthem you might just have a lot of things to do. Because you want to generate as many crystals as possible, so you have to do those quests from the commanders. Meaning that you're going to have to spend a lot of time. The crystals which can be mined here are precious resources. Governors can use them to open up a whole new frontier of research. Oof, that sounds pretty amazing. During the season, crystal cannot be plundered by attacker or sent as aid. That's very important to keep note. Crystal will be removed once the season is over. Crystal mines... The Crystal Research Center and any the effects of any research completed therein will be reset and removed. Now, there's a couple of good things that we can take from here and some bad things. One, upgrading the Crystal Mine, meaning that you will need to spend speed ups. We are presuming. Maybe it's going to be that kind of upgrade that it only takes three seconds but you need to have the resources regarding of the level. So you can reach like the highest level of the crystal mine, maybe without spending speed ups, but I just don't think so. I mean, if we take Lilith as we know them, everyone is complaining about their building speed ups, right? So I'm pretty sure this is going to be a way how we can get rid of the building speed ups because everyone will want this building maxed out so they can start producing crystals ASAP. The second thing we can get about this is that there is going to be research. It says over here, governors can use them to open a whole new frontier of research. Does that mean that we will be able to boost our troops even more? Is not enough the 50% attack that we will get from the Crusader Fortress? These crystals will allow us to get even higher and better research? That's going to be crazy. What's that supposed to mean? The research is going to be two options. One is going to be either a very fast research, like I was mentioning three seconds on the building. You just need to have the resources for it. Or two is not going to cost so much, but it's going to take speed ups because research speed ups is something that everyone is complaining about. So this is going to be a way how we most likely going to spend some of our research speed ups and building speed ups. Before I'm going to go further into the, the video, I have to mention about our sponsor for this video, which is Bluestacks. I always get these questions. How is my game so smooth? 
And Ronnie, what emulator are you using? I'm using Bluestacks to play Rise of Kingdoms on my computer. I'm gonna post a link on the top and you also wanna check the description of the video. With the link on the top is my Bluestacks settings and a couple of advices regarding unlocking virtualization technology, which is very important for Bluestacks to run smoother. Now I'm gonna tell you in this video, two tips that I just learned recently. The tip number one is pressing the game guide. Right now while pressing Rise of Kingdoms, if I press on the game guide, it's gonna open a control panel on the right side and it's gonna help you a lot. I personally learned a couple of new things from this panel after I've done the video. You wanna check that video, it's a one minute and 30 seconds, but it's gonna teach you a couple of things that you probably haven't known about. So for example, I didn't know that you can use the arrows on my keyboard to zoom in and out. I used to go with the control and the mouse scroll. And you notice that accidentally you can open other windows going with the control and the mouse scroll, but with the keyboard, you do not. The second thing that I learned from there is that you can hover around the map with your keyboard using the WASD keys from your keyboard instead of just going with the mouse. So you can make use of your left hand as well while playing on PC. Now the second tip that I learned recently on the recent updates, they have added an echo mode in Rise of Kingdoms. Now what does echo mode mean and what does that benefit you into the game? If you wanna increase your gaming experience in Rise of Kingdoms by playing an emulator like Bluestacks on your PC, the echo mode, will lower the amount of resource consumption from your computer. So if you're lagging or if you're experiencing this kind of problems, then echo mode is gonna be something that you wanna use. You're noticing that they have an information button. So if you click on it, it's gonna take you to a web page where you can read even more information about it. You just turn it on and you can control the number of FPS that you want from it. It's set as default five FPS, but you can go even higher. Now, if you wanna open multiple instances, as you no notice over here, you have a button to open multiple instances. You have two, three, four accounts that you wanna play simultaneously on Rise of Kingdoms. You wanna make sure that you're gonna use the echo mode on each and every instance to make sure that you lower the resources of your computer. So what are you waiting for? Download Bluestacks today, check the description of the video below and make sure you enhance your gaming experience. Coalition system. I have already talked about the coalition system. Governors can join a coalition along with their alliance. Coalitions are created by alliance leader. Alliances must be of the same camp to join the same coalition. Coalition futures. Governors in the same coalition can join each other. Rallies and garrison reinforce and repair each other. Buildings grants alliance health. I already talked about this in my video. This is a very interesting, a very nice future. More players that you have in one alliance is going to be more fun, right? It's going to be longer rallies, it's going to be easier garrisons and so on. After the past glory event is over, coalition members can teleport to any member alliance's territory. We already knew about the past glory, right? That we can teleport on any other territory. What I'm hoping that mean by this is that as long as you are in your coalition territory, so for example, I'm just going to say Triple A with Triple B, they are making an alliance, right? You are in Alliance Triple A, but you teleport to Alliance Triple B, meaning that you will not be able to take a rally if you're on the Triple B territory because you're part of the coalition. So I hope that makes sense. This is what I'm hoping that they mean by this teleport. Reward sharing. All coalition members will receive first occupation reward for holy sites and passes. Now, that's going to be very interesting. Is the gold chest or the purchases work the same? We're gonna have to wait for that. Boost, all coalition members will receive boosts, effects from holy sites and passes, and passes will be open to all member alliances. That's gonna be really great. So the coalition is gonna be the new thing. They wanna make this even more massive. Building occupation, all coalition members will share the occupation bonuses from Altar of Darkness and Ancient Ruins. Again, super amazing about that. After the season ends, coalition will automatically disband. Say your goodbyes and prepare for a reunion in the future. I really like the coalition system. This is really amazing. Apparently, this is not VIP 18 as I thought, <laughs> even though the picture look very similar for that. Going on to the reward system. During the heroic anthem story, governors can exchange season coins and conquest coins for a wide variety of prizes. Season coins complete 
research projects in the Crystal Research Center to earn season coins. Now that's gonna be very interesting. So noticing how important that crystal research and that crystal mine is, is gonna be very crucial that you need to maximize it and doing those quests because we're gonna get into the shop soon and you're gonna see a lot of amazing prizes that you can acquire with the season coins. Conquest coins, complete crusader achievements in the lost kingdom to earn conquest coins. These are gonna be very rare and the reason I'm gonna say that is you're gonna see in the shop the conquest coin might just be some very real rare achievements that you will be able to complete. Saved coins, unused season coins and conquest coins will be automatically saved for next season. Holy moly scrapioli. This is mind blowing and this is amazing. You want to know why? When we're going to get to the shop, you're going to notice because I have to finish the camp system. Unused season coins and conquest coins will automatically be saved for next season. I had to repeat it because this is amazing. Camp system. We have the fire camp, the earth camp, the wind camp and the water camp. All right. So it doesn't matter if you get bonuses. For example, if water goes against fire, I don't see anything mentioning. Hopefully it's going to be some kind of bonuses. It will kind of make sense a little bit right or maybe if wind goes against fire or something like that it would be a kind of a cool thing right isn't to have a little bit of a bonuses just going against different camps or earth hitting water or something so fire and earth goes together against water and air <laughs> let's go into the shop and let's see what the shop has in store for us because there's a lot of goodies this is what i'm trying to say that is super amazing that you will be able to save up your coins from one season to another yes of course thank you very much earned by completing research in the crystal research center so this is the stuff that you can save. So if you didn't make 200,000 coins, instead of just getting some legendary material crates, which they sound really great, you can save up for the next season and you'll be able to get legendary designs. Now, how amazing is that, right? This is the free to play dream to get legendary designs. And all you have to do is just some research. Instead of throwing away just to get a couple of Legendary heads, which most likely not going to help you, or some legendary materials, which I'm expecting this to be a random one instead of a pick one chest because it's a legendary equipment material crate. But getting some legendary designs, that's definitely going to be highly worth it. On top of that is the amazing blueprints, which personally, I can't wait to put my hands on them. I'm going to do everything that is needed to get this. Ring of Doom, oh, sign me up, baby, sign me up. Then you have the Horn of Fury blueprint, which <laughs> normal attack of a 30% chance to gain a 50 rage. I mean, please, I want that. I want it now, if it's possible. Plus various other accessories, which right now we don't really find a lot of utilities, but you never know where this normal attack 5% might be very useful. This is just a first review on the item. I still think Ring of Doom is kind of the best thing to go with, but that's just my opinion. And then Horn of Fury. A lot of things to discover. After that is the coins, which they also mention they are carried forward. So for example, if you didn't manage to get none of these coins or you managed to get only one coin, because every blueprint costs at least two coins and the design costs three coins. So, for example, you have two coins, but you want the design. You don't want to spend your two coins on a blueprint. They are carried forward. So, on the next Heroic Anthem, you're going to get that one coin, and you're going to get your legendary design. Is this super amazing? I really find it super amazing. So far, what I have seen in the Heroic Anthem seems to be the next best thing in terms of KVK. So, let me know, guys, in the comment section below, what do you think about the Heroic Anthem? I... I'm expecting this to be a blast regarding the new KVK and I'm expecting this to be the next best thing regarding events because it seems to pack a whole lot of new things even that is the same map as a size but with a lot of more things in it until next time this is your boy Geroni signing off peace out yo and take care see you on the next one and stay safe out there mm -hmm.